All right, friends, you may want to pay attention to this. This might help you out when you're in a power outage situation like we are right now after getting hit by Hurricane Adelia. So today I'm going to show you how you can turn any portable power station into a model that will accept, well, an external battery, in a sense. Now, when I say any portable power station, one of your portable power stations needs to have a UPS feature. That's called an uninterruptible power supply. So essentially what that means, like my EcoFlow Delta II Max, I can plug this into a wall outlet if I had power, and it'll do what's called pass-through on it. So the unit will turn on, it senses that it's getting power from the wall, and whatever you plug into it, an extension cord, right now I'm running a transfer switch, we got freezers, refrigerators, ACs, all kinds of stuff in the shop. Well, it sends power from this plug, whatever it's plugged into, through the unit, the unit's technically sitting idle, and it allows it to flow right back out into the cord and power up or whatever it is that you have. Now the beautiful thing about the UPS feature is, should you lose power on this plug, whatever it's plugged into, this unit instantly swaps over to the battery power inside, kicks on the inverter, and continues to provide the 120 volt output to your appliances. And it does it so quick, you should not ever even have an appliance kick off. So I've always stressed whenever you start getting these mid-size units, try to get one that has to where you can add on external batteries. All right, so let's look at two different models here that are very similar as far as some features go, but lacking that battery ability. And I'm gonna show you how, well, two different brands can work in conjunction and give you that add a battery function. So on this EcoFlow Delta II Max, you can see I have two ports here on the side to where you can add up to two external batteries. That's a really, really nice feature you can make one of these small units run for a very long time and power up a lot of stuff. Then you have, for example, another very popular unit, this Alcatel P2000. It's a 2000 watt unit. This is 2400 watts. They both have similar battery capacity, but it has nowhere to add external batteries to it. But this also has the UPS feature that this unit has. So here's the cool part. Take this plug that you would typically plug in the wall to make the UPS feature work. All right, and as simple as this is, plug it right into this unit right here. Now we can power this unit on. It'll technically feed right through this unit that's smart enough to know that and go out the cord up to my transfer switch. Or again, if you had an extension cord plugged into this and you were running, say, a freezer or refrigerator. So I've essentially just doubled the battery capacity of this without adding an external battery to it. Say, for example, I could do the exact opposite of what I just showed you and this unit does not have the ability to add a battery, but I could technically plug this unit or any other type of unit into it and make that an add-on battery. So that's awesome. If you happen to own a cheaper model like this Alcatel that doesn't offer that ability, you can have any other portable power station, generator, or wall outlet plug right into it, pass through, or you can plug any other power station into it and technically stack batteries. And in theory, you could put as many together as you want, adding as many batteries as you want. Now I know some of you are thinking, well, there's gonna be efficiency losses. You're right, but it's not gonna be much like you're thinking. So when I power this unit on, there's your efficiency loss. It's taking battery power, kicking on the inverter, making, well, 120 volts. Then it's passing it through this unit that's not really using any power consumption other than just to run a few basic electronics in there and be ready to swap over in an instant. It's not converting battery power. It's just sitting here idle and waiting, monitoring everything. So you're talking very minor uses here. Now once this unit dies, this one instantly is smart enough to know, hey, I just lost incoming power. It swaps over to its battery and bam, the cycle continues. Now it drains its battery down and you've just technically doubled your runtime here in this particular instance. Add a third one of these, a different brand doesn't matter you might triple your runtime now why is this important for example today well we may need to leave it is literally rained here for four days after the hurricane and my big solar system over here has yet to charge up well rain clouds the kryptonite we all know to solar it's just it is what it is and i don't have enough panels outside i already knew that we're trying to build out our system as we go so if we leave today and we're going to be going quite a few hours running errands, getting gas, doing everything else that we're doing, eventually this unit's going to die and not run my freezers, refrigerators, and other things out here in the shop while I'm waiting on all this to charge up. All right, so let's test this out. I've yet to try it. In theory, it should work, but I was waiting to record this with y'all. So let's see if we can turn any other portable power station into an add-on battery. So I'm going to plug the EcoFlow into the Alcatel. Power everything on. So for starters, you need to have this unit charged to 100%, otherwise 
this unit's going to try to charge this one up as well as do pass through on it. But see, here's the way I know that it's working. Look at the input. It's exactly the same as the output. And then look over here on this unit. Hopefully you can see that. There it is, 354 watts, exactly the same. So that means 300 watts is passing out, coming into the input side of this, and then going straight out of this unit up to whatever it is you've plugged in and you're running. So this unit will stay 100% until this unit completely dies. Then this one automatically swaps over, whether I'm here or not, and it'll run off its battery power. So essentially, you can add a battery to any portable power station that exists by just adding another portable power station, but it must have the UPS feature, and a lot of models do. All right, so the good news is this works. You don't have to buy a specialty battery for an extra unit. Now, I do want to let you know, it does make more sense to buy a unit like this Delta II Max that accepts batteries and to purchase a battery if you're going to run a single unit, and here's why. Pass-through charging, you typically, most units will only do 1,800 watts, and there's a good reason for that. Your typical wall outlet, a 15-amp wall outlet, this standard in a lot of homes, is rated for 1,800 watt max. So these units are not going to pass through or pull any more than a wall outlet can provide. Otherwise, you're just going to trip the breaker of whatever supply in the unit. Now, this is a 2,400 watt output unit, so I'm kind of crippling it by doing this, but I'm not running 1,800 watts in the shop at all. My freezers, refrigerators, and window unit won't pull anywhere near that, so this is working beautifully. But if you want to get the true 2,400 watts out of a unit like this, or like my big Delta Pro, if I want to get 3,600 watts out of it, you have to do the add-on batteries to them. So that's the negative of doing it this way. You are going to reduce yourself to 1,800 watts total, which is perfectly fine for most people. I could stack as many of these together as I want. I could leave for a few days and know that my freezers and refrigerators are going to be perfectly fine, or my security cameras, or internet if I need to watch the home while we're going. We did that with a hurricane that just recently hit so this is awesome and you don't have to worry about how many battery ports that you have just keep daisy chaining since this has a UPS feature I could add another portable power station over and plug into the Alcatel and guess what as long as it's at 100% it's going to straight pass through when that other unit dies then it goes to this one when this unit dies then it swaps over to this one so it's essentially I don't know I maybe you need to test all that but you could continually daisy chain I don't sure see any issue of continuing to daisy chain causing a problem so this is awesome. I'm glad I did this little test right here. More people need to talk about this, share this. Um, this will help a lot of people out. Like I said, now you can leave your stuff for long periods of time and uh, add on batteries, say, to a unit like this that doesn't have the capability of adding a battery to it. All right, y'all. Thank you for all your thoughts and prayers. We've been without power for four days now. Uh, I need it to get sunny. It's supposed to be sunny the rest of the week. That's great. That means I can go back truly off-grid, at least over here at the shop, with my big solar system. I just got to get it charged. And then I can use these little ones in the house, and you hear the big gas generator going whenever we want to run central AC and things like that. We fire up the big guy. I'm actually about to go kill it. It needs to cool off. I like to do that, and I'm going to kick my EcoFlow Delta Pros on over there. We'll run them in the house all day long on those, and then at nighttime we may kick the big generator back on to charge up the Delta Pros or to run the central AC for a long period of time. Having all these different options, we can swap back and forth on whatever makes the most sense for us. All right, hopefully you enjoyed this little episode. Thank you all so much for watching. We'll catch you on the next one.